Yeah, let's meditate for a few minutes. The tradition of the Sankatan or Sangatana goes back to the time of the Buddha. His stepmother brought him a robe. And she said she wanted to give it to him. And he said, if you want more merit, give it to the Sangha as a whole. Which is an interesting principle. You would think that something given to the Buddha would have the greatest merit. But he said the Sangha basically is the birthplace of Arahants, birth, birthplace of noble disciples. It's what keeps the religion alive after the Buddha's passed away. And so the support of the Sangha as a whole is an important principle in the practice. I remember having a discussion one time. There was a monk at Watasokara whose family was quite wealthy. And he had his own personal account. And every year when we had the John Lee commemoration, he'd pull out his little monk checkbook and make donations to all the famous Johns. And as he was writing them out one day, he said to me, I don't understand this. Why did the Buddha said that giving to the Sangha as a whole would be more meritorious than giving to individual noble disciples or to the Buddha himself. And one of the reasons I thought of it at the time was that if you wait for someone to become a noble disciple before you want to give to them, which happens when people are thinking about merit in quantitative ways, nobody gets to eat. Here we are, however, supporting the Sangha as a whole because we're supporting everybody's aspirations. without focusing on one individual, everyone's aspirations for awakening, trying to encourage that. This is what helps guarantee that there will be the opportunity for people to practice and to keep the religion alive, to keep the teachings alive. And tie them make a distinction between what they call sasanatam, the dharma of the teachings, and sabhavatam, the, the dharma of things as they are. And the sasanatam is something that comes and goes. It takes a Buddha to proclaim it to the world so that people can practice. But it's going to die out, whereas the Dhamma, things as they are, is the way they are. That's never going to die out as long as there's anything happening. It's all going to follow the principles of the Dharma. But for people to see that, realize that, gain awakening because of that, it requires a sasanatam requires the teachings to be alive. For the teachings to be alive, they have to be not only kept in books, but they have to be put into practice. And there needs to be an institution where people can take on an apprenticeship, where you learn not only the words, but also the habits of those who practice before you. As long as we support this, we're supporting the opportunity. Now the Buddha does say that you, you want to look for members of the Sangha who are practicing well, because there are going to be different groups. Some groups are intent on practicing, some groups are not. But the principle of generosity, you want to make sure that it's not focused on one individual, it's focused on the Sangha as a whole, the community as a whole. Because you never know for sure who's got what attainment, but you do know that the community, when it's practicing well, provides that opportunity, and that'll be an opportunity to open to all of us, if not in this lifetime, in future lifetimes. And as John Swat used to say, when we have a monastery like this, it's not just for the monks, it's also for the lay people. It gives them a chance to be near the monks, to pick up habits from the monks, to pick up instructions. So that those people who don't have the time or the energy to devote themselves fully to the practice can be near people who do. And both sides benefit. So keep that mutual benefit in mind.